white fellas have got lots of keeping places all over the damn country, but we just want one keeping place, that's all we want. The keeping place is the current but temporary home of one of the largest collections of Aboriginal art, the Blackfellas Dreaming Collection, put together by Aboriginal people in Australia. I contributed to this collection because of its urban significance and the fact that I'm very fond of breaking stereotypes. This is an exhibition not only with Uncle Gordon's style of painting, but the other collected artists as well, perhaps the other Gordons, Gordon Hooky, uh, kind of my mentors, my heroes and in urban Indigenous art and the very type of artworks that struggle to be displayed on a regular basis in regional galleries anywhere in Australia. And I think it's really important for us to be supporting this creative expression. It's part of our culture and it's a way of telling the, um, those outside of our community who we are. I don't know any other collection the same as this. This collection can never ever be replaced. It's a good thing about this collection Somebody else who's non-Indigenous can't come along and say, oh, we've got a bigger collection than so-and-so. They haven't got a collection like this. I know they haven't got a collection like this because they didn't, they weren't, the, the, the powers to be weren't, weren't interested in buying uh, urban Aboriginal art because they can't be in control of urban Aboriginal art. The origins of this vast collection go back to the 1970s when a group of Aboriginal artists, including Gordon Siren, a pioneer of urban Aboriginal art, unleashed their art as a powerful new means of expression. Since then, Gordon, along with his partner photographer Elaine Siren, has spent more than 35 years acquiring and contributing artworks for this important collection. See how that's white around there? It includes over 500 works of Aboriginal artists, bringing together the art of the remote desert people, such as the late Clifford Possum and Emily Kingaway, to the contemporary paintings of urban Aboriginal artists like Gordon Hooky and Adam Hill. Communities should take it on as well because they live in this community and there's a lot of Aboriginal people live in this, in this community and, 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 it, and people need to know that the whole truth and nothing but the truth about this, the settlement and everything else of this country and who really owned it and, and who belong, what belongs to who and so forth and, and uh, they need to face the truth and live with it and, and that would give a lot of, a lot of hope and uh, a lot of inner strength and, 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 and peace or feeling, all sorts of feelings it would create for Aboriginal people. Uh, it's very important for Aboriginal people. And then we can tell our stories. There are two fundamental problems with this space as it currently is. The first is that obviously the cramped nature of it means that the artwork just isn't on display in the way that it's supposed to be. There is no way that you could actually, you know, bring a large number of people in to see it because it's just not set up in that way. And the second, perhaps even more fundamental thing, is that it's just not the sort of facility that protects the art. So every time it rains, there's a leak. So the, the very valuable materials and paintings here are in danger of being ruined. Artwork like this, and as valuable as this, should actually be stored properly. This just isn't the sort of facility that ensures that this sort of artwork is protected. These facilities I had here, I'd love to put the Mona Lisa or something in here. They'd, they'd, be, they'd, be, they'd be an outcry because uh, there's, there's dust comes into this building, there's, there's moisture comes into this building, uh, and this building is, it leaks in different parts and, and it's very destructive on the artwork. This exhibition's 
Of course, it's an asset for the, the wider arts community. It's, it's a museum in the waiting. It's, it's um, uh, you know, it, it's one of the, it just reeks display. It just, you know, it just wants to, it's yearning for walls to be hung on and, and we can't keep it in these conditions. It needs to get out there and, and um, I guarantee it, I, I, I'd bet pounds for peanuts that you wouldn't find anybody without a jaw agape if they walk through these exhibitions. Gordon and Elaine have handed over its management to a committee of Aboriginal people whose role is to negotiate and ensure the safe keeping of the collection. The long-term vision of the committee is to support the creation of a keeping place that serves as both a cultural space but a place of learning for Aboriginal people where we can learn and teach each other but we can teach those outside the community about our history and culture, that that's sort of something that we would like to see. And of course we see that if there was such a place, a collection like this could be at the heart of it. The committee is seeking a benefactor who will purchase the Blackfellas Dreaming Museum collection for the purpose of using it to found the Keeping Place Museum and Cultural Centre which will become the first ever national Aboriginal-run art collection in Australia.